We're here in Mallorca for the launch of KTM's brand new 1290 Super Duke GT. Now, we've just had the presentation, they've told us everything we need to know about this new bike. It's absolutely full of electronics, so whilst I get my head around them, we're going to make use of the short amount of sun that I think we've got a forecast for today and get some miles under our belt. So we've crammed in as much riding as we could this morning whilst the sun was out and as predicted it was pretty damn short lived so since this morning we've been rained on, we've been hailed on. Bloody cameraman has the cheek to say that he's cold. But I'm not going to let it dampen the spirits because this bike is pretty damn special. Now two of my favourite machines at the moment are both KTM's. One's a Super Duke R for being totally bonkers, one of the best hooligan machines you can buy. And the other is the Super Adventure for being one of the most tractable, versatile and impressive bikes on the market. And both those machines use KTM's 1290 engine. So that's all I needed here to be super excited to ride this GT version when I found out it was powered by the same motor. I feel like this is one of those bikes that you almost don't need to ride to know it's going to be good. You know, you take a glance back and you see Brembo brakes, WP suspension, Bosch electronics, KTM's know-how of how to build a bike. And it's a bit like putting Jennifer Aniston's face on Megan Fox's body mixed in with a bit of Jennifer Lopez maybe. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. You just know it's going to be good. So what did we find out in the presentation? What did KTM tell us about this bike? Well, most of us that have ridden the Super Duke R can all appreciate it's a great hooligan bike. But what surprises many of us is actually that it's a great all-rounder too. So yeah, it's got a stupidly powerful engine, but it's also very smooth and it's comfortable and it's got an impressive tank range. So you only needed to add a few simple features to make it a great sports tourer. And that's what KTM has done with the GT. So this has still got that Super Duke R DNA. This is not one of those neutered, diluted sports tours, not even close. So it's got the same chassis geometry as the Super Duke R. There's a few extras like this adjustable screen, a larger 23 litre fuel tank with bigger side pods for improved weather protection for the rider. There's more comfortable seats. There's a longer and stronger subframe for the integrated pannier mounts. And there's also things like WP suspension, semi-active suspension with quick shifter as standard. And despite all those extras, it still only weighs 205 kilos dry, making this a sports tourer with the highest power to weight ratio in its class. So those are the changes that KTM have made to make this thing look the way it does but that is barely scratching the surface because there is so much going on inside the engine with electronics so we're going to go back out on the roads get our head around that before that horrible looming rain cloud catches up with us so the good news is it's not raining the bad news is it's hailing and it looks like ktm knew that because They've kindly put some waterproofs already there in our panniers. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck? Part of the reason there are so many electronics on this bike is so that you don't get yourself into too much trouble with that engine. So it's a V-twin 1301cc, 1.3 litres, and it's basically the same engine out of the Super Duke car with a few small tweaks. So it's got revised cylinder heads, different valve timing, and slightly different throttle maps as well, but it still makes 173 horsepower and 144 newton meters of torque. So it's an absolute beast like the Naker bike. Although it's got that mental power delivery, the crazy top end, the crazy mid-range torque, it's also got a really smooth, grunty, low-down power delivery, which makes it perfect for all three bikes, really. It's great in the Naked bike, it's great in the Super Adventure, but it's also a really good engine for the Sports Tourer, where you can just chuck it in sixth gear and cruise on motorway at whatever speed. It will still do like 180 miles an hour, this thing. Yet, at the same time, you can chuck it in sixth gear at a really low speed, and it's not lumpy at all. So as I said, there's so many electronics on the Super Duke GT and they're all displayed obviously on the dash and controlled by the switch gear stuff. So 
There's your favourites on the main screen, your riding modes, your damping modes, fuel range, trip, air temperature, all the usual stuff. And all you have to do is flick through these buttons and it's really simple to change it. So you flick down and it'll take you into your driving modes. Sport, street and rain. Sport and street are basically different throttle maps, slightly less aggressive, slightly more aggressive to sport. Rain limits power to 100 horsepower and has a really soft power delivery. Then you go into your different damping modes for that WP semi-active suspension. So sport and street are slightly different in the sense that for street mode, you have something called anti-dive technology. So that when you come into a corner and you're heavy on the brakes, it basically adds some compression damping to that front end to keep the bike nice and level. Whereas in sport mode, it doesn't do that. It allows the bike to pitch forward more, better handling. Whereas in comfort mode, it softens the whole stuff up. Then load, you can change the, the preload on this with the bike through the handlebars for one person, one person with luggage, two people, two people with luggage, and so on to set the bike up correctly. Then you've got your traction control and ABS screen. So you can turn traction control off if you want to, but you have to have the bike running and you have to be at a stop. So you can't do it on the fly. Your ABS has got a few different modes. You can either turn it off or you can have it on road mode, or you can have it on supermoto mode, which allows you to lock up that rear wheel. Next up, is the heated grips. You've got three different settings on this, minimum, medium, and maximum. It's been absolutely freezing today. I've got leather gloves on, they're soaking wet, so I've had them on maximum, and they're one of the best systems out there. They really do work, they're properly hot, a bit like the BMWs, they're a heater grip that you want on your bike. Then there's the quick shifter, which is the first time it's been on a 1290. There's cruise control. Then there's two optional extras. So there's hill hold control and MSR, which is motor slip regulation, which effectively complements the slipper clutch, which comes to stand on this bike. So when you're bailing it into a corner, you can bang down from fourth gear to second gear, and it kind of works the opposite of traction control so the slipper clutch will do its thing but if you're really hooning it down and the wheel's going to lock up it will add a tiny bit of throttle to stop it from doing that so it just complements that slipper clutch and it's to stop you from locking up the rear as you come into a corner one of my favorite things about the super duke gt is this front end i think it looks awesome it's got these led daytime running lights the same ones on the super duke r but then also with that new bigger tank and the larger side bolsters they've now integrated these cornering lights in them and they basically light up in sequence at 10 degrees 20 degrees of lean and 30 degrees of lean so when you're pitching it into a corner instead of your lights pointing out into absolutely nowhere they're still focused on the road where they should be one of the things i'm not so keen on about this bike is the screen it's great that it's adjustable but having just been on the triumph explorer launch where there's a nice electronic screen it's really simple to use this just seems like a bit of a downgrade especially for the price of the bike so it's really easy you can kind of change it on the fly but you just need to pop it out and then slide it up it's not particularly smooth and then pop it back in saying that it is very functional we've been doing a lot of riding on the motorway today a lot of riding in bad weather and it does keep the rain off you and also it limits the amount of buffeting so i've been pretty damn comfortable on the bike today given the riding conditions that we've been in Just stopped off on this corner for some photos, a bit of video, but uh, it gives me a moment to warm my hands up on the heat of grips. It's so cold and so wet. But saying that, the fueling on this bike, despite the massive amounts of power, is really smooth, so you can be really precise with the throttle. But despite that, the electronics have still caught me a few times. But the uh, roads around here, especially in the wet, are like ice. But the uh, tyres on this bike are Pirelli Angel GTs, and I don't know how, but they're finding grip. They're seriously impressive. I've had a great time on this bike today, although saying that I'm seriously happy to be back at the hotel. I've got purpley fingers from being so cold. Despite that though, I've still had fun and that is what Katie and were trying to achieve with this bike. They didn't just want to make a sports tour that was capable of crossing countries devastatingly quickly. They wanted to do that, but the riders still have fun whilst doing it. And I've certainly had it. Alex Hoffman and Thomas Kutcher of the PR manager for KTM said if they can make it from Austria, the headquarters of KTM, all the way to the Valencia MotoGP. It's something like 2,000 kilometers in under a day and a half and still have fun, they were gonna sign this bike off. And here it is.
that says it all really. There are so many features on this bike. People are bound to say, do you really need that? I mean, do you need cruise control? Not really, it's just a nice thing to have. Do you need semi-active suspension? I mean, personally, I don't think you need it. I've never jumped on a bike with electronic suspension and thought that handles so much better than conventional forks and a conventional shock. But what it is good at is for peace of mind, you know? I can jump on this bike and I know that someone who's programmed that suspension, who knows a lot more about forks and compression damping and rebound damping and all that stuff than I do, has set it up properly. All I have to choose is, am I gonna ride in a sporty manner today? Or am I just gonna ride on the street? Or do I want something comfortable? Flick of a button and it's all set up how it should be. Like the Super Duke R and the Super Adventure, this thing isn't particularly cheap. It costs 15,999, but if ever there was a bike that ticks all the boxes, it does everything that you need of it, this is probably it. It's devastatingly quick. It handles amazingly. There's a load of accessories that you can throw at it, panniers, Akrapovich exhaust, and so on. I mean, as an all-round package, it doesn't really get better than this, in my opinion. If the Super Duke R is the beast, then this is it's more comfortable, more practical, but just as mental big brother.